Chapter 7. The Young Girl as War Machine The young girl displays spontaneous assent to everything that could possibly signify subjugation to necessity. Life, society, work, the education of a child, another young girl. But this assent is, in itself, determined in exclusively negative terms. Assent is given to these things only insofar as they block all individual expression. There is always a penal colony hiding behind the young girl's vitrified smile. The young girl knows no other legitimacy than that of the spectacle. Inasmuch as the young girl is docile under the arbitrary rule of them, she is tyrannical when it comes to the living. Her submission to the impersonality of the spectacle gives her the right to submit anyone to it. In fucking as in all other sectors of her existence, the young girl behaves like a formidable mechanism for quashing negativity. Because the young girl is the living presence of everything that, humanely, wants our death. She is not only the purest product of the spectacle, she is the plastic proof of our love for it. It is through her that we ourselves pursue our own perdition. Everything she has managed to neutralize takes its place in the world of the young girl as an accessory. Seduction as war. They speak of bombshells, using a metaphor derived less and less from aesthetic discourse and more and more from that of ballistics. Among the troops occupying all visibility, young girls are the infantry, the rank and file of the current dictatorship of appearances. The young girl finds herself in a relationship of immediacy and affinity with everything that is competing to reformat humanity. Every young girl constitutes, in her own way, an advanced position in the imperialism of the trivial. In terms of territory, the young girl appears as the most powerful vector of the tyranny of servitude. Who can guess the fury enraging and engaging her at any sign of disobedience? In this sense, a certain type of totalitarian social democracy suits her marvelously. The violence of the young girl is proportional to her de delicate emptiness. It is through the young girl that capitalism has managed to extend its hegemony to the totality of social life. She is the most obstinate pawn of market de domination in a war whose objective remains the total control of daily life and production time. It is precisely because she represents the total acculturation of the self, because she defines herself in terms fixed by extraneous judgment, that the young girl constitutes the most advanced carrier of the ethos and abstract behavioral norms of the spectacle. One would have to create a major educational project, perhaps on the model of the Chinese or Khmer Rouge, with labor camps where boys would learn, under the direction of competent women, the responsibilities and secrets of domestic life. A quote from a young girl. The insignificance of a young girl certainly reflects a situation of infantilization and oppression, yet she also has an imperialist and triumphant quality. This is because the young girl fights for the empire, her master. Unlike the young girls of Babylon, who, according to Strabo, willingly gave the temple the money they made from prostitution, the young girl unwittingly turns her profits over to the spectacle. Furthermore, it was here that the schoolgirl's real pandemonium began. Behind these letters there was a heap of confidential letters from judges, attorneys, public prosecutors, pharmacists, businessmen, urban and rural citizens, doctors and such, from those high and mighty who would always impress me so. I stood there astonished. Did these men, pretense notwithstanding, Socialized with the schoolgirl? Unbelievable! I went on repeating, unbelievable! Were they so oppressed by their maturity that, unbeknownst to their wives and children, they'd send long letters to a modern schoolgirl? Pause. These letters to a modern schoolgirl. These letters made me finally realize the extent of the schoolgirl's power. Where wasn't it present? Witold Gombrowitz, Erdiduk. The young girl is a procedure of metaphysical sequestering, which is to say that one is never imprisoned by her, but always in her. The young girl is a summons to everyone to ensure that they are worthy of the images of the spectacle. The young girl is an instrument in service to a general politics, of the extermination of beings capable of love. Identical in this to the alienated social whole, the young girl hates sorrow because sorrow condemns her, just as it condemns this society. The young girl works to propagate a terrorism of entertainment. How many cops does it take to make a young girl crack a childish smile? Even more. Even more. Even more! The young girl's vocabulary is also that of total mobilization. Loyalty! You better! The young girl is part of the new lifestyle police, making sure that each person fulfills his or her function and sticks exclusively to it. The young girl never enters into contact with a singular being, but rather with a set of qualities objectivized in a role, a character, or a social situation in which one is supposed to conform, no matter what the circumstance. Thus the person with whom she shares her own little alienated daily life will always remain this guy or that guy. The young girl covets commodities with an eye filled with envy because she sees her prototype in them. That is, she sees herself, only more perfect. 
What remains of her humanity is not only what she lacks in commodity perfection, it is also the cause of all her suffering. It is in this remaining humanity, therefore, that she must eradicate. With unfined bitterness, the young girl reproaches reality for failing to measure up to the spectacle. The, igno the ignorance with which the young girl plays her role as cornerstone in the present system of domination is part of the role. The young girl is a pawn in the all-out war being waged by the dominant order for the eradication of all alterity. The young girl declares it explicitly. She's horrified by negativity. When she says this, she is, like Spinoza's stone, persuaded that it is she, herself, who is speaking. The young girl wears a mask, and when she confesses to doing so, it is invariably to suggest that she also has a true face, that she will not, or cannot show. But this true face is still a mask, a terrifying mask, the true face of domination. Indeed, as soon as the young girl lets the mask fall, Empire is speaking to you live. And what if we eliminated guides from the planet? Why try to get something new out of the old? Stick a guys, get rid of them. No point getting annoyed. Historically, genetically, man has done his time. He's leaving the stage all by himself. Every young girl is her own modest purification business. Taken together, young girls constitute the most lethal commando they have ever maneuvered against heterogeneity, against every hint of desertion. At the same time, they mark, at every instance, the most advanced position of biopower, its poisonous solicitude, and its cybernetic pacification of everything. In the hungry gaze of the young girl, each thing in each being, organic and inorganic, looks as though it could become possessed, or at least consumed. Everything she sees, she sees as, and thus transforms, into commodity. It is in this sense that she also represents an advanced position in the infinite offensive of the spectacle. The young girl's the void that they maintain in order to hide the vividness of the void. The young girl doesn't like war. She makes it. The young girl is the ultimate slavery through which empire has obtained its slaves' silence. It is not enough to know that the young girl speaks the language of the spectacle. It must be further noted that this is the only language she can understand, and that she thus requires all those who do not loathe it to speak it. The semiocratic authorities, who demand ever more insistently an aesthetic assent to their world, pride themselves in their ability to pass off whatever they please as beautiful. But this beauty is only socially controlled desire. Sick of guys? Get a doc. You're what, 18? 20? You're headed off to college to study long and hard? You think this is the time to lose your momentum by desperately looking for affection from a boy who's got nothing to give? Or worse, get stuck with an undeveloped boyfriend who's not very mature, not very nice, and not always clean. The young girl delivers conformity to all of the fleeting norms of the spectacle, and also offers the example of such conformity. Like everything that has achieved symbolic hegemony, the young girl condemns as barbaric, all physical violence directed against her aspiration of society's total pacification. She and the dominant power are obsessed with security. The aspect of the war machine so striking in every young girl lies in the fact that she leads her life in a way no different from the way she, may, she wages war. But on the other hand, her pneumatic void is already foreshadows her future militarization. She no longer defends only her private monopoly desire, but in a general sense, this state of alienated public articulation of all desire it is not their instinctive drives that imprison people within the spectacle, but the laws of which and what is desirable, which they have inscribed into the flesh. The young girl has declared war on germs. The young girl has declared war on chance. The young girl has declared war on passion. The young girl has declared war on time. The young girl has declared war on fat. The young girl has declared war on obscurity. The young girl has declared war on worry. The young girl has declared war on silence. The young girl has declared war on politics. And finally, the young girl has declared war on war.